Welcome back to WebRTC Tips by WebRTC Ventures. In today's WebRTC Tip, one of our engineers, Jacob Greenway, is going to talk with us about the off-screen Canvas API. This is a really interesting API that allows you to do some heavy media processing off of the main JavaScript thread, which allows for a lot of performance enhancements and uh, some interesting techniques that will become more and more a part of WebRTC applications being built now and in the future. So I'll leave it to Jacob to explain to you what that means. Thanks so much, Jacob, for talking with us today about the off-screen Canvas API. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I'll just get into it here. Um, so yeah, I'm going I'm to talk about the off-screen Canvas today, which is um, an up-and-coming uh, API that's still a little bit experimental, but uh, just now coming into the more um, standard API for all, all your um, uh, famous browsers out there. So Chrome, Firefox, uh, Edge, everything. Um, so yeah, this is a this is a real-time uh, high-performance um, off-thread uh, rendering context for the canvas. And I'll get into what I mean by that in a second here. So uh, first I'll talk about myself a little bit. Um, so I'm a, Web, uh, a WebRTC engineer here at WebRTC Ventures for almost a year now. Um, I've really loved working here. A few of my uh, different um, hobbies around the technology space include open source, uh, home lab, and real-time uh, video and audio. So um, if you guys are familiar with any of those, feel free to um, send me a message or something. Uh, I'm always uh, ready to talk about different uh, things with open source or home lab or, or things like that. So um, now you know a little bit about me. Um, I'll kind of go into what the off-screen Canvas API actually does. So um, it, th this allows the developer to uh, basically take all of the uh, the uh, heavy lifting from the Canvas that that's either rendering three D three um, D objects or uh, high resolution frames or things like that, and take it from the main JS thread, which is running alongside all of the uh, DOM manipulation stuff, all of your uh, normal JS stuff, and put it into a separate thread, which really frees up the browser to um, display the main JavaScript thread uh, very quickly and display the uh, canvas in an asynchronous way. So um, this allows for a significant performance boost uh, when doing stuff such as many media uh, multiplexing or um, heavy applications like games or uh, 3D rendering. So this is a really big um, uh, change for any sort of like high availability type Canvas work. So um, Canvas frames are transferred to a worker thread, which is basically a separate thread in the browser or JavaScript world. And the bitmap image of the Canvas is actually shared as a, um, a like a shared memory space between the main thread and the worker thread so that the main thread can render the canvas or display the canvas and the worker thread can actually do the, the heavy lifting there. There's a few different diagrams down here for uh, how the event modeling and how that shared memory space works. Um, but there, there's a lot of different uh, uh, documentation on the Mozilla uh, developer network um, site. So if you're more interested in the kind of uh, back end part of this, uh, definitely look into that to, to see all the different um, ways this is implemented. So um, this is a fairly early API. Uh, so for example, in Firefox, which is the browser uh, that I like to use, uh, it's still a little bit experimental. Um, so you have to enable a flag in Firefox to use it. But uh, according to this um, bug that's being worked on by the Mozilla team, this is a very um, uh, soon to be implemented feature in the actual mainline uh, Firefox API. So um, this is definitely something worth looking into for uh, the next uh, year or so for if you're if you're doing any sort of heavy lifting with the canvas. Um, but you'll see on Chrome and basically every other browser that implements uh, Chromium in some way uh, has the off-screen canvas API already implemented. Let me... So uh, I wanted to go in a little demo to kind of demonstrate the difference between the default canvas and the off-screen canvas when doing some sort of very heavy lifting uh, rendering. So let me go into the demo here. <clears throat> so I have this in Chrome because uh, obviously from what you saw earlier, uh, my Firefox browser is not uh, 
up to date with the current uh, off-screen Canvas APIs, but I'll show this uh, demo here in my uh, Chrome instance, and I'll open this up here. So basically what this is doing is just creating a bunch of different um, random uh, circles of different color and size uh, on the canvas. And this is actually rendering in a uh, 4,000 pixel by 4,000 pixel uh, screen. So this is a very um, resolution heavy um, operation, which means that on the uh, main rendering context on the on the main JS thread, this is being bottlenecked by uh, whatever else is, is um, being taken into consideration when rendering this. And so we're seeing an output of only 20, 20 to 25 FPS uh, from the default canvas, just because everything else that's um, in that in that browser main JS thread is kind of uh, clogging up this uh, rendering <coughs> rendering context. And then in the uh, off-screen canvas, since all of this uh, rendering is done in a separate thread asynchronously, um, we're actually seeing this come. Kind of, it, it, it'll render in its own thread very quickly, and then actually um, we will uh, grab the, the different uh, bitmap images that are rendered in that separate thread and just display them here um, in, a, in a much uh, faster uh, way. So this is, this is actually giving us almost real-time um, 50 FPS uh, frame rate. And, and the, the main thing too is this is, uh, the reason I actually had to open this, this tab up um, when I showed this uh, demo is because if I leave it open for too long, the uh, it starts to bog my computer down just because this default canvas is so um, heavy on the browser that it actually starts to slow things down. So um, it, this is a, uh, if you're doing something as heavy as 4K resolution type uh, uh, media mixing, then this is a very useful uh, tool to have. So let me go ahead and close it again. And I'll kind of go into how this all how you can implement this on uh, the browser side. And it's actually very easy and simple to set up. Um, so there's a few different ways to set up a, a off-screen canvas. So the one that you saw just now in that demo is this first one, this first bullet point, which is um, transferring an existing canvas to an off-screen context, which is rendered asynchronously. And you can see kind of a little bit of a code snippet here, how this works. So basically you create um, you 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 get a uh, reference to your canvas um, in, in JavaScript, and you use this transfer control to off-screen method that allows you to um, basically turn that into an off-screen canvas. It uh, creates a, and then you create a separate worker thread using a off-screen canvas uh, API or uh, file that will actually do all the rendering. So this this off-screen canvas.js file has all of your normal um, draw calls to the canvas. And this is happening in a separate thread because you instantiate it as a worker. And then you actually use this worker.post message to send the specific canvas that you will be drawing to um, with the uh, calls here. So you'll specify the canvas and then you'll put uh, in brackets here, which is basically a way of saying what data to transfer um, the, the canvas, the off-screen canvas uh, handle. And then the other way is basically um, where you have two different canvases and they're both, uh, one one is drawing uh, and the second one is actually uh, rendering what the first one draws. So it's a little bit more uh, complicated and I can go into, let me pull up the, uh, and this is a way to, to synchronously display the uh, canvas and still have off-screen capabilities. Um, and so this is, uh, if I look at here, you actually have to use this transfer to bitmap image and it and it sends the bitmap uh, one by one to the um, other off the, uh, the other canvas, which basically allows you to synchronously display um, these images on the uh, the browser context. So, uh, it's a little bit more involved, and uh, they go into a little bit more detail on this uh, on the off-screen canvas MDN documentation. So, if you do want to have this um, displayed with no sort of like uh, input lag, or if if you're if you have if you're taking input from a user and then rendering it and then bringing it back, this is probably the best way to do it. Uh, so that it's synchronously displayed. So I, re I recommend looking through this documentation to get more details on that.
So let me go back into here. So, um, so yeah, the, the, the disadvantages to using the off-screen canvas might include, um, so you have to refactor an existing canvas project, which may be a little bit more involved than you think, uh, just because all of that uh, rendering that has to be done on a separate thread might be mixed around in different files. So um, that's one thing to take into consideration. Um, also, the other thing is that uh, the rendering context this is happening in, the uh, JavaScript file that's actually running as a separate thread, they cannot interact with the, the DOM. So if you wanted to, um, for example, you're moving a, some sort of sphere on the canvas, if uh, that sphere, if it hits the end of the canvas, something on the document changes, that's a little bit more complicated. You have to set up um, messaging between the worker thread and the main thread. So there's a lot of refactoring there if, you're, if, you're can if your existing canvas interacts with the DOM a lot. Um, and then the other thing is it's, it's still experimental. Um, and it's also a little bit more difficult to implement in like React or Angular-based projects just because um, they use Webpack and workers are uh, handled a little bit differently than uh, you would think with uh, normal JS files when using Webpack or any sort of um, like uh, transpilation for uh, JavaScript. So just be aware of that. Uh, it, is, it is possible to use this with React and Angular, it's just a little bit more uh, work to get it set up. So. But I definitely still recommend using the on-screen canvas if you think it's a good fit for your application, just because the benefits heavily outweigh the uh, the disadvantages. So. All right, thank you so much, Jacob, for talking with us today about the off-screen canvas API. A lot of interesting stuff in there. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you want to explore more using the off-screen canvas in your live video application, we'd be happy to talk to you about that. Or if you just want uh, more broad advice of building your WebRTC application. If you're looking for a team to build that application or to help you scale your existing application to take it to the next level, we can help you with all of that at WebRTC Ventures. Just go to webrtc.ventures, contact our team there, and we'd be happy to talk to you about your live video application.